describe the first experiments you conducted on ICR? While I was in Italy, an experiment had been underway involving ICR. What happened was that uh, while I was working at the Naval Medical Research Institute in Bethesda, Maryland, I had been working on magnetic fields affecting rat behavior. And before, between Atlanta, where I first heard the Blackman data, and Eriche, where I presented the idea, I had convinced the people at the Navy to actually try this resonance concept on rats. This was a technique that was very, very useful at the time because there was already an experiment underway to look at rats with magnetic fields. What I did was to adjust the magnetic field in the rat cages such that there were cyclotron resonance magnetic fields. And they were tuned such that the rat, if it was affected, would forget its training. It's a, it's a technique that's used in rat behavior uh, again and again. The idea being that you train a rat to do a certain job, you apply a field or you give it a medicine, and it no longer can remember what was trained. And when I got back from, uh, from Italy, I remember calling the man at the laboratory, colleague, and saying, how did the experiment go? And I was surprised at his result because he said it was a fantastic result. He said he had never seen a result like this before. What happened was that the rats, all the rats, forgot completely what was being applied to them, to train, what they were trained for. And instead, they regained their memory 24 hours later. Well, I was surprised to see that the effect was so large, but what happened over the years was that experiment was then repeated three or four times around the world. It was done in the state of Washington, where they found they could make rats remember poorly or remember better than ordinarily. It was done by my colleague Jardine in Russia, and a number of other groups also did it. So the original rat behavior experiment done while I was still in Italy, which I had designed before I left, turned out to be a wonderful experiment in terms of showing an effect. It's the only time I remember where you do an experiment, and the first time you do it, you see a very interesting result. At the same time, the gentleman who wanted to work with me, McLeod, and I, and a third professor, uh, Stephen Smith, who is now uh, uh, retired also, he, the three of us, designed experiments involving a number of, a wide range of, of model systems. For example, we worked with uh, diatom motility to show how the diatoms move on, on, a, on a surface. And we were able to make the diatoms move faster if we tuned to, you know, say, calcium, or we could make them move slower if we tuned to potassium. And in this way, we could control the diatom mobility. In addition to that, we did other experiments. We were able to actually make plants grow faster, and this is a very easy thing to do. You put plants into magnetic fields, which are tuned to the calcium resonance, and, and they, go, they actually grow faster. They all get to the same point eventually, but the immediate change occurs in the first few hours that you apply the, the field. In addition to that, a number of people wanted to uh, look to see whether or not there was an industrial possibility, commercial possibility. And in this case, what happened was that the three of us, the three professors involved in this, were approached by a, a, an investment group that wanted us to work on bone repair. We worked with them, and sure enough, just as it occurred with rats and diatoms and plants, 
we saw again very large effects on the repair of bone. And that process is still in operation today. Uh, it's been used for hundreds of thousands of people to repair broken bones that don't knit quickly. There are additional studies uh, that I organized with students and colleagues at Oakland University, uh, a place where I was uh, uh, chairman of the physics department. Uh, this is Oakland University is in Michigan, and uh, the work involved mainly work on cells, looking at how quickly cells proliferate. Uh, not only that, that I did that, did I do that, but around the country there are many other groups that looked at ICR effects on cells. Uh, Liberty in California, uh, there was a, one of 80s groups, and certainly uh, later on Blackman himself got back in this looking at these effects. Uh, the effect also was found in planaria. Planaria are uh, uh, worms that are able to regenerate. You cut them in half and they grow their backside back or they grow their front side back, depending upon which side you throw away. Uh, we, th we, we generated the, uh, the brain of the uh, planarian worm, and we were able to control this using the ICR. Uh, this work was later repeated in Russia, and they did a much more extensive study of the same thing, finding that they could regenerate worms faster using the ICR fields. So, uh, the, the long and tall of this is that there are many, many experiments that have been done using ICR in a laboratory setting, where you look at uh, various aspects of, uh, of cellular work. Uh, one of the more important experiments was done um, in California with a, a group that was working with a, a company that was looking at insulin cells. The exact name of it is uh, um, insulin-like cells, insulin-like growth factor. Insulin-like growth factor, they found, was able to be increased tremendously by the application of ion cyclotron resonance fields. So these experiments were performed not only by my colleagues, uh, McLeod and Smith, and by my students at Oakland University, but in various universities around the United States and in Russia and uh, later in Italy as well. So it's been a matter of uh, many, many experiments that have been done showing that in general, the resonance combination of fields will always change the growth pattern, increase growth or change it in some way. Why 